So we hear the ID TechX, and who are you? I am Maciej Wołoszka, and I am from Inuru, company which is Berlin based. We are manufacturer of printed OLEDs, which are printed on air using industrial printheads. So you do printed OLED? Yes. Industrial printheads? Yes. What does so, that mean? So does mean like when you have screens, Samsung screens or LG screens, they are made by evaporation in very expensive by a very expensive equipment in vacuum. They waste a lot of materials. The equipment costs billions. Literally, the production last production line by LG costed billions of dollars. And we just use printheads, which are much much cheaper in order. Of, you know. Can I print this in my HP printer? Not yet, but we, we can help you with this. Not yet? Yeah, but we just use printheads which are used for to print uh, posters. Konica Minolta. Like uh, these? Yes, These exactly. kind of things, right? Exactly. Just uh, pro, pro printers? Yeah. And so like put, industrial printer, not the What do you device. mean? You put the OLED material in there or something? Yeah. You print layer, one layer, dry it, another layer, dry it. Then you just make a top contact and then encapsulate just, it and then, then you have OLED. It's just segmented, right? You, you, you can't do like a whole display that has, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, active metrics or something. We are working on this. You can? Yeah. Uh, is that just, just like a matter of having nice substrate instead of, you know, the just one pixel. This is just one pixel. Like from going from one pixel to matrix, it's not so difficult, yeah? Nice. And uh, hi, so who are you? Hi, I'm Alexandra and I'm working at HCB, Hamhold Center in Berlin, in innovation lab uh, called Highsprint. <coughs> can, can we so open open this up? I think we can open. Can yeah. we open, Sophie? You have the key to yeah. open? Yeah. And, uh, so we are doing printable photovoltaics. At the moment, hybrid per perovskites are one of the materials which can be easily scaled and printed. And in principle, what we are trying to do is to bring lab scale to larger scale by using inject printer and so these are can you grab um, one of these to show for example so this is printed photovoltaic yeah so in principle what we can do we can print a solar cell using inject printer and using different inks we can also do different band gaps uh, which means that you can do pretty colors so you can do a solar cells which say your logo or your um, I don't know, some sort of label, you know, your name. And that's going to be working like a solar cell. But it and cannot be very high efficiency, right? So at the moment on the lab scale, small devices performing with a 23%, which is very similar to silicon. It's similar? It's very similar. the best solar cells? Yes. This is even higher efficiency on the lab scale than the silicon. The problem is then when you scale it. At the moment we are working on it quite hard and so far we have efficiency around 15% but in general by the end of the year we're planning to do 10 by 10 and uh, bring efficiency to also 15% and using together this with silicon we can do modules uh, with the tandem devices. You can do what? We can do tandem devices with a silicon and perovskite, combining their efficiency. So you need to put some perovskite in there? Yeah. Is that standard? People use that in solar cells or not? Not yet. This is very new material. It's basically been discovered a long time ago, but first time implementation in solar PV was done in 2009. And since then, we went from 2% to 23%. And uh, can, uh, can you show, is this also kind of stuff you're doing, these things here? Uh, which one? What's behind here? This high sprint logo? So this is just the examples. Yeah. I would say this is more interesting example. Um, yeah. So what is that? So basically this is our logo printed in a different materials. Uh, you can see that these are different colors. These are not just pretty nice inks. These are actual material which can be used as absorber in solar cell. And we can print it in a logo. So you print a logo and From it's actually actual, a solar cell? Yeah, it can be a solar cell. At the moment it's printed on a glass, but it can be also printed on a conductive layer, put the metal contact and you can have a solar cell. But for example, this and this, yeah, um, it doesn't work, right? You need to have a kind of thread going through or... So you have to have like a it... metal contact on top. And at the moment, these are just showcase printed samples, but we can do a real device. So how does a metal contact would look like? Uh, it would be like a, uh, a line if, or something yeah. visible? It's not transparent. You can do semi-transparent. 
So for example, this company, they do this uh, uh, semi-transparent silver inks and if you print it on top, we can also have semi-transparent solar cells. Like I did a video with them before. I think uh, one of these, right, is just transparent and... Yeah, we can put on top of our cells. So that's why you are, are you partners? What is the, uh, how, how old's Innovation Lab, what, yeah. what is that? So Hemholz uh, Central Berlin, this is a research institute in Berlin, and this is a part of Hemholz Association in Germany. This is a large um, organization which consists of different research facilities across the whole Germany. And Innovation Lab called Highsprint is one uh, lab which is collaboration between different industrial partners and also Hemholz Association. So if you uh, partner together, let's say, yeah. yes. so you have an uh, OLED display with a solar cell yeah. and with this substrate, what do you call it? The conductive, conductive metal, layer. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have a whole in, all in one package or what? Yeah, I mean, in principle, yes. We can power, for example, we can print flexible uh, solar cell. We can print flexible or in oh. principle all that. Yeah, and put them all in future on clothes or on top of your uh, some sort of design feature, you know, and have it self-powered. So how long have you been working on this? Uh, our lab is quite young, so we started in 2018, and but we have quite... Um, but you're in a rush, right? Yeah. You want to get this out by 2020 or what's, what's, this, what's happening? How far are we from... Um, your technology, for example, being a, a full display. I want an A4 page OLED display, 4K, and uh, un unbreakable, and with a solar uh, on in the corners, in the bezel. Okay. Uh, honestly, it's difficult to say. You know, we are working on this, but it's like maybe one, two years. I would say the first prototypes of matrices, but all this are ready for sale. Yeah, this is what we already sell. And if somebody wants to buy it, it's totally possible. For sale? Yeah. But is this is mostly things. for uh, promotional kind of products? Yeah, this is what our first idea. Like We want to make OLEDs on air, which are a little bit worse than the OLEDs made by LG on screens. But they're pretty cheap because they're injured, printed by you know cheap equipment on air, quickly and cheaply. Cheap? But how yeah. much it costs if I want to have a birthday card like this? You have to send us quotation. Quotation. I need to make a big birthday party with thousand invited guests, right? Yeah. Um, otherwise, you don't take small orders, or maybe yeah. you might. Then please send us email. Then, All yeah, right. I know that's possible for it, so I can tell and, you. And uh, how far are you from, uh, so from official, mass production and everything? Official plan for this year is 10 by 10 uh, media module. 10 by 10, what does that mean? Uh, 10 by 10 is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So. Like this, yes. Yeah. Like this? Uh, mass production or just lab? Lab. Lab. But how do you get for into testing. mass production? So for mass production, we need to scale up and then depending on what kind of uh, and product you want. If you want to couple it with the silicon photovoltaics, then of course we need to go for uh, sizes which are rel relatively similar to uh, silicon wafers. But if you want to have a standalone perovskite solar cells, we have to go probably to larger than A4, uh, which probably depends on many factors. And one of those would be a scalable applique or the position of all the other layers, not perovskites. Because as soon as you figure how to print or slot die code, or yeah, deposit perovskite on smaller area, you can do it also on a large area. It's just a question of equipment to make other layers uh, compatible enough with the perovskite. So, um, are you saying that flexible solar panels might not be perovskite, might be something else? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that this can exactly, this is exactly what can happen, that we can have flexible perovskite solar cells. But what we need to do is to make other layers which are below and above perovskite and encapsulation on top of this solar cell compatible with our processing conditions you know so when we can we can now print on the foil and we are pre pretty much not limited by size of this foil as soon as it's not like meters uh, but to make conductive layers that would take another half a year of research to make inks and special processes to deposit those layers on top and um 
is there a chance that you might be leading in this field? Or there's a lot of people working with solar, right? And yeah. printed all that, there's a lot of work too, I guess. Big companies also working on it, right? Yeah. yeah but but uh, is there a chance that uh, you will be the leaders in this? Uh, so, so far, there are not that many companies. All of them are not even, who are somewhat close to pilot lines. Uh, some of them are located even here or at this exhibition hall. But there are basically five companies in the world who can do it. And we are one of them. Five is not many. Not that many. So what is the five, you want to say? No. No? So there's five, and yeah. is a chance maybe Europe will be the leader in this stuff? So far... There, Berlin will be the leader, and you, I mean. In so Berlin. far in yeah. Berlin, in Berlin area, the probability of this is very high. So do you need uh, EU funding to speed up, uh, uh, get mass production happening, or you already have it? I don't know how it works. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, how do you get to, you know... Because everybody needs solar, and you want to print it out cheap, put it on yep. every building, it needs to work in the rain. Is that a good idea or not? I mean, there are some concerns about the uh, environmental factors, but I think if you kind of think about logic uh, behind this calculation, it doesn't really prevent from using perovskites and uh, such materials in PV, even with the rain and with, with the quite drastic climate conditions. You can that have a layer on top, right? Some yeah, protection. protection. Glass. You just use protection. Maybe not for flexible, maybe you need to have a good foil. And it's still, we are talking about 10 years from uh, first solar cells ever made in the world, you know. So 10 years what? The first perovskite solar cells oh. were made literally like 10 years yeah. ago. So we are not that far into industry. And I think we have pretty good chance to actually be one of the first um, research facilities and maybe future yeah, industry of perovskites. So I would say there are not yet enough testing for their stability and we cannot promise uh, some long time of the uh, lifetime of the solar cells because ju we just have this research for literally 10 years. But it's very promising. It's cheaper than... Uh, it's very cheap. And then the, what's here now? It's very cheap. And How much cheaper? So Are you an order of magnitude cheaper? No. I would say it's hard to say on a large scale and also we are doing it in a lab. I mean, uh, as soon as you scale up everything, it's going to get a little bit cheaper because it will depend on what you buy and stuff like this. Uh, but it's possible to make it cheap, it's possible to make it available, it's possible to make it pretty, it's possible to make it flexible and integrate it into buildings and things like this. So there is a huge potential. It's not yet enough time to actually make this kick. But since 2009, we have 20% of efficiency more. So from like 3% to 23 is a huge step within 10 years. How much more can it get? It can get, get theoretically, theoretically can go to 30%. Mm. but uh, not much because there are some physical limitations to it. Uh, but in principle, we can go even further when we combine it with the silicon photovoltaics. But if it's 10 times cheaper, then it doesn't matter. It does matter when you can get 50% solar cell. It does matter? Yeah, it does matter. Because you have already installed and very developed technology for silicon, and if you just implement a thin foil, of perovskite solar cell on top and can double efficiency, that makes sense. You just double the efficiency on the existing yeah. technology? Yeah, if you just apply a thin foam of uh, perovskites on top, for example, in the future that could happen. Is that like a no-brainer to do this? It is a very, very brainer. <laughs> very, I mean, it's like, a, of course it's a brainer, but it's like, a, of course it has this to is happen. What we, yes, we, so you we have to do it. thinking not just to replace no, the we, you want to enhance the existing yes, net. Yes, exactly. So the thing is that we are not competing with silicon in terms of uh, conventional panels which are standing on the roof. We are looking at how to improve that. And in addition, we are looking for a new application, for example, semi-transparent solar cells, where silicon cannot be used because of it's not transparent, obviously. And by using like this, for example, colors and things we can do integrated uh, photovoltaics into building design, you know, and window application, of course. Nice. 
kind of tint, like you know those airplanes, you make it darker and less uh, dark. Dim light, no. Um, it's not like a liquid thing that can go in and out of the. I don't think that no. it's possible. That's fine. Yet. No Maybe need. there's some. No need. You can have yeah. a mechanical thing that opens and. Closes. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. you always have like some sort of shields for the sunny day. Why not use this this light to power solar cell? Nice. So. And uh, how much cheaper are you compared to traditional OLED manufacturing? Hundreds One order of magnitude, though. Hundreds of thousands. Because if this, this is going to mass production when we build a big machine, this is going to cost uh, cents by so OLED. This is like five orders of magnitude. Oh, Maybe, probably. And, yeah. uh, 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 how, big, how big are your teams? Like, uh, is that a secret? No, it's not. It's a like few people like in the laboratory in my company yeah. and in your case I don't know. So we have for example we have two main tools which we use for perovskites uh, and we have a couple of postdocs and a couple of PhDs on each so in total we have a team of uh, certain people. And um, what if there's a huge order what happens? So Can far we don't we don't sell what if anything. There is? Um, what if people say, I want it like 2020, this much? Oh, in 2020, it's going to be very different. I mean, we are growing. Year. It's like it's a really crazy learning curve. I think by that time, we will be able to do that. But first of all, it also takes one minute to make this sample, you know? Mm, one minute? Yeah. Cool. This is like one minute print. So in principle, we are just limited by how much we can press the button and how much ink we can make and this is you'd use for this for example you probably use like microliters and we can make liters of solution uh these recyclable yes totally yes so we what does that mean the all the different parts it's mostly plastic the all the lines are so thin that you don't have to worry about them and it's mostly mostly polymers or, or recyclable poly things so Automatically, no, no issues. Yeah, exactly. And there's no toxic heavy metals or whatever inside. And uh, yours is recyclable? So, um, in our case, as I said, it's just a very new field, so there's not that uh, much research into this. But there are a couple of publications on, let's say, research state where people try to recycle even the materials which are used. And in principle, they were saying that you can recycle substrate, which is main cost of the solar cell, for example, because we use quite expensive substrates. And then what you can do is you can recycle uh, materials because they're solu uh, yeah, they basically soluble in different solvents, and then you can split them and use them again. So there is a potential for recycling. And of course, you would not just throw them away. Because is it dangerous materials? You need to wear get masks in the lab? So they are a little bit air sensitive. This particular sample is quite air sensitive. That's why we work in glove boxes in fully nitrogen atmosphere. Like and this right here. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, you have to be behind the thing. Yeah. Um, is that an issue or not? No, this is not the issue. Is this it standard is, for? This is very standard. I mean, you just go to the lab, you wear gloves. That's it. And uh, and all the solar cells that are there safe. now are not more or less safe than the standard solar cells, right? How does I it mean, compare? Okay, so uh, there is a, the perovskite consists also of uh, small quantities of lead, but the amount of lead in perovskite module will be the same as in, in the silicon module due to soldering. So also there are com calculations about amount of lead which can go into soil in case of tornado. You know, if all the modules are broken on a field uh, with a thousand of modules and you break them, there are not going to be any impact on the nature. Mm. So it is very small. So this layer is basically 300 nanometers thick. And this doesn't make a lot of material. So if you scratch all of it, you will not even see it. You know, it's like basically a small particle. And is yours? Uh, you can you can print you can breathe the air around the printer. Is no issue. Yes, it's like in normal printing house. Like we just use organic solvents, of course, but uh, they're safe. We check this. I work with, every day with them, it's, and uh, most a lot of them are used also in food industry. So it means like they're really safe and not toxic for humans. Nice. So, um, what do you think about the show? 
ID it's tickets. Really nice. Very nice. Yeah, a lot of people with a different. Everyone is printing. Really and cool. It's right next to your office, right? Yeah, almost. Almost. Yeah, yeah it's like 20 minutes from yeah. uh, biggest research uh, region in Berlin called Adlershof, where all of the research facilities are. Is this like the Silicon Valley of Europe? Yes. It is. In Berlin, yeah. In Berlin, yeah. it's like cool. It's a cool area. Lots of cool stuff. The, we have a synchrotron. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot.